Changes in Partnership Perspectives The Bible says men are to look out for things of this world, and in relationships, men have led for millions of years. While guys have been watching out for the things of this world, they haven't been able to express their inward emotions. Relationships that don't allow the guy to lead, aren't acknowledged, or valued as traditional. And relationships that aren't founded on God's principles, there are no boundaries, and you find them out during the breaking of the rules. But relationships that don't form boundaries aren't going to last. Relationships founded on God's principles are expected to have traditional values, which shows loyalty. In these eternal relationships, each partner must be able to express concerns and emotions equally inwardly and outwardly, to balance between the extremes of heaven and hell. And in any relationship, you must be clear and direct about what your boundaries are, and then don't let boundary violations slide. If you have a partner that doesn't want to form boundaries, they probably wouldn't want to respect them either, and that can be a problem. Boundaries are a line that marks the limits of an area, which is to help form balance, order, and structure. Often boundaries are surrounded by dedication, devotion, and sacrifices to avoid compromises. The boundaries could include emotions, information, money, possessions, space, and time. In emotions, some people may be oversensitive or even irrational. Personal information helps form your identity, personal assets are useful and often of value, and personal space can be threatened or uncomfortable. Both external and personal time are the same. Personal time is the time that one experiences personally, and external time is the time used to perform work. In ordinary cases, you have the right to keep these areas of your life private and choose whom it is private to. Any of which can hinder growth, and so just be clear and direct. It is okay to set different boundaries with different people. It's also okay if someone doesn't understand why you set such boundaries. To acknowledge consequences if boundaries are crossed, they just have to know what the boundaries are. Also, to have an eternal relationship each partner must communicate feelings, ideas, and thoughts of other significant concerns to form dignity. At the beginning to visualize whether or not a long-term commitment is possible, and at midpoint to visualize basic commitments were kept to set a marriage date. What can you do for me? Before 2000 the world advocated for a stay-home mom, nowadays most guys want their gal to help pay the way. Both gals and guys are seeking someone faithful, honorable of stewardship, polite enough to take home to parents, and often this does include someone with a job. This has led to competition for high pay with gals too wanting their pay, they have become choosier when it comes to guys. Finding love for most has been more about selfless pride, and less about joining together as one. With guys valuing another breadwinner, perceptions of who is to express their emotions are still up in the air. In this stereotype perspective, the person who leads is also the breadwinner and they don't get to express inward emotions. If the gal is a breadwinner, her emotions will go unnoticed by default. Since gals are inwardly most of them haven't been willing to share the expression of inward emotions, which makes them appear self-centered and stubborn. And since guys are outwardly most of them haven't been willing to share the expressing of outward emotions, which makes them appear arrogant and ignorant. Relationships suffer when guys are unable to express their emotions, and when gals are unable to express their daily concerns. If both work outside the home, there are issues that have to be addressed. Other significant concerns can include buying school clothes and school supplies, or daycare for the kids after school. Also, who will prepare breakfast, who will prepare lunch for the kids, who will pick the kids up from school, who will prepare dinner, who will help the kids with their homework, and who will prepare the kids for bed. Some common concerns are barriers to communication, emotional distance, financial difficulties, routine conflict, sexual intimacy issues, and lack of trust. Relationships require work and are bound to face large and small challenges. Everyday stressors can strain an intimate relationship, and major sources of stress may threaten the stability of the relationship. As long as each partner is willing to develop a solution to address the issue, most relationship problems are manageable, but when challenges are left unaddressed, tension mounts, poor habits develop, and the health and longevity of the relationship are in jeopardy. Some guys may even fear being judged for not leading the home properly as a guy should do. Even in same-sex relationships, these concerns lead to confusion. There is no respect in the world for a stay-home dad or mom. The gal's perspective of expressing inward emotions ought to be shared to be counted as a tradition. Gals ought to take a step back, to allow guys to express emotions. Since guys are willing to allow gals to lead going out to work, to continue honoring this perspective guys ought to become less stressed by getting more sleep. With proper sleep, guys and gals selfless pride wouldn't happen, and either would be able to make clear sense with relaxed communication, and things would be avoidable. Polygamy and its extended forms. Polygamy is also known as polygyny, polyandry, or plural marriage. Polygamy means taking part in a marriage with several spouses. Traditionally for a guy, there is a choice between several females and slash or young females. Systematically, the young females are given away as brides in a pyramid, all while the young males are cast out to enable older wealthy guys to have multiple wives. 
the older wealthy guys donate money to help build a temple, and then as a gift, they get the younger wives. And the young gals are used as living currency to be exchanged in the pyramid. Polygamy has existed in Africa since the beginning of time. Nigeria is home to over 40 million polygamists, a large population of fathers can't even count the number of children that they have. Polygamy is killing the vibe of native Nigeria, most of Africa, Middle Eastern countries, and the Third World. In North America, polygamy wasn't a culturally legally or normative recognized institution, before the continent's colonization by Europeans. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was formally organized in a small log cabin, in upstate New York in 1830. Polygamy became a significant political and social issue in the United States in 1852. When the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also known as the LDS Church, made it known of their practice, which is called plural marriage, and that it was part of its doctrine. Nowadays LDS churches include Latter-day Saints and Mormons. The total of members for Latter-day Saints is 16,118,169, and Mormons which includes US 6,592,195, Brazil 1,354,127, Mexico 1,417,011, and the Philippines 745,959. This totals to 26,227,461, and with Nigeria over 66 million members exist around the world. Polygamy culture supports child sexual abuse. And enables the rapid spread of heart disease, HIV, mental illness, rape, and even STDs. Polygamy has often formed the oppression of women they are fueled with bitterness, and polygamy's insidiousness lowers their self-confidence. Having said that, traditional marriage has often included a guy with several gals slash side chicks rotating throughout his bedroom. Ordinary people believe plural marriage is a sexy nightly threesome, that relies solely on sexual stereotypes and enables the fast breeding of children. While polyamorous is an act of taking part in multiple serious romantic or sexual relationships, this seems to be what players and playgirls are advocating nowadays. Any form of polygamy can have its downfalls, supporting child sexual abuse. Polyamorous male or female persons with kids enable destitution and illiteracy with various needs for relying on government assistance. The result is fewer children knowing their fathers all while, under submission to oppression and violence. And any structure built on plural relations nowadays will result in it not working effectively for anyone to benefit responsibly. Since 2004 polygamy relationships have increased to over 2 billion men and women. Over 3 billion people believe in polygamy, and over 2 billion women and children around the world live under the oppression of polygamy. Why obsessing over nudity is wrong. People who obsess have either obsessive thoughts and urges or compulsive, repetitive behaviors. And obsession is a compulsive disorder. Dangers of sex addiction. Sex addiction is a state characterized by compulsive engagement or participation in sexual activities such as sexual intercourse. According to specialists, sexual addiction is one of several sex-related disorders within the concept of hypersexual disorder. Sexual dependence refers to people who are unable to control their sexual behaviors, thoughts, or urges. Pathological sexual behavior includes hypersexuality, erotomania, Don Juanism, and paraphilia. The concept of sexual addiction is controversial among psychiatrists, psychologists, sexologists, and other specialists whether compulsive sexual behavior constitutes an addiction. The research established on animals suggests that sexual behavior arises from the same transcriptional and epigenetic mechanisms that mediate drug addiction in laboratory animals. Sexual addiction has a new classification, under ICD-11 as compulsive sexual behavior, to cover a persistent pattern of failure to control intense, repetitive sexual impulse or urges resulting in repetitive sexual behavior. Is sexual addiction a mental disorder? It isn't acknowledged as a legitimate mental health disorder in the clinical literature, but sexual addiction is identified in the public consciousness as a legitimate neuropsychological disorder. When you have a sex addiction you have gotten out of line with yourself, and you possibly have been sexually molested or forced to prostitute at an early age. Either way, you now have delusional thoughts and weak willpower to do what is morally right. But delusional thoughts and weak willpower surrounding addictions are very common in our society, and so you are not alone. The delusional state of well-being often leads to other addictions including alcohol, drugs, extortion, gluttony, lusts, spending even thievery. Those enslavements are habitual habits, non-resistant impulses, unmodified actions, and behavior. And uncontrolled impulses make you susceptible and vulnerable to sex addiction. Most people who were taken advantage of at an early age were affected by sex addiction and saw a parent or parents live in an uncontrollable state of recklessness, which was the result of forms of abandonment. Eventually, they weren't self-conscious about the consequence of actions and behavior, and so they didn't use caution during danger. Furthermore, they didn't teach safety to kids, which can make everything confusing and overwhelming for them. Modifying excessiveness is one area of a person's life that requires the most attention. Because once you are out of line with self, 
you wouldn't want to modify compulsive talk about a doctrine, family, friends, kids, spouse all while disrespecting others' beliefs, opinions, or privacy, people of authority, and the church Jesus established. When God said man need to repopulate the earth, also he wanted mankind to modify their irresistible and unconscious impulses to avoid corruption. Proven righteous facts often become distorted with unproven and unrighteous forms of manipulation. Players and sex addiction. Sex with multiple gals surrounds players' feelings and emotions, so much so, the player mentality is often the center focus, and everyone around is often induced to fear. Once the player lacks compassion, empathy, and enthusiasm, they become disconnected from the main relationship. After that players tend to deny typically anything from the use of alcohol or drugs, financial status, other relations, STDs, support for their kids even whereabouts. Even though it is a demanding and draining lifestyle, this type of behavior affects multiple areas of a player's life. But some guys suffering from abandonment issues may be trying to repair the relationship they didn't get with their mother. Players become unwilling to admit their faults when this shows signs of carelessness to induce others to irresponsible thoughts. But ordinarily, players don't acknowledge the carelessness until someone points it out, and then it becomes an overwhelming factor. Confronting players has been proven to be difficult most become confrontational when confronted. Both guys and gals ought to stop going out the way, convincing others to cheat on their spouse to seek revenge. This only worsens circumstances, and sure you never consider STD's PROV ability until it is too late. When it results in life-threatening cancers and diseases, something most people rather not discuss. Not enough people are getting rid of STDs promptly otherwise, more would be healthier today. Anymore, it isn't fair, to say a gal is insecure when she has a sex addiction, without acknowledging a guy does get insecure when he has a sex addiction. You must leave room for error. Can dating multiple gals become horrifying? Yes, the STDs, multiple children, and denial of support can be overwhelming for guys in these circumstances. It is hard for anyone to have a firm foundation with STDs, literally, results are moving from place to place. Once a person gets rid of the STDs a house will stand. Some individuals go an eternity in hell on earth before acknowledging to get rid of the STDs. However, God will not allow a house to stand firm, the unbelief in him is too strong during these times. I can't count how many parents I have heard bragging saying, I raised my children right, I'm a good mother or father. When they weren't able to keep good housing or provide long-term financial support. I have been there endured the sufferings, and literally, it gets real. God said every tree of life brings good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings evil fruit. Though corruption is a comparison to trees, it shows how human ways of life can become corrupt. Otherwise, you don't force the sword on kids during their time of calamity. Why do fears hold us back? It is the excessive negative circumstance that you overlook to achieve a positive outcome. These fears hold you back when you are not in a habit of controlling sexual desires. When you don't control your sexual desire, things of this world come and go rather quickly. And most of us spend a lot of time thinking about why things don't last in our lives. However, most people don't take ownership of excessive tendencies, until they have given up everything they have. When you are venomous for a rebellious nature, it consumes your whole character. Your beliefs and thoughts tend to control the ability to break the cycles of habitual habits, and the pride of someone judging your weaknesses stands in the way. In these situations, you fear religious saying, you are too weak to remain wicked because you are already consumed with too much unrighteousness. Once these habits become aggressive, they become uncontrollable. When these habits become aggressive, reversing thoughts will require reversing the beliefs. If you are someone with a sex addiction seek help. When a person is out of line with self they have become defiled of flesh, crooked lacking substances. Defilement can include discoloration of the eye, skin, and toenail bed, embedded tumors even marks on the skin. Also, poor hygiene and sanitation can lead to STDs. Obesity too is formed by an obsession with foods, however, all of which are signs of corruption. Obsessing over nudity also promotes a love for money in the form of addictions, gambling, drugs, and drinking more signs of corruption. And eventually healing through purification will be needed. Based on 2008 data statistics showed thereafter in the US 2014, there were 20 million new infections each year. New cases of STDs cost $16 billion in direct medical costs each year, 50% of new infections occurred in young people ages 15 to 24 a quarter of whom had sex. The number of existing infections was estimated at 110 million, and the estimated number of Americans living with an STD was 65 million. More women carried common STDs than men, and women infected were pregnant passed it on to newborns. Women and young people are severely affected by STDs though, bisexual and gay men are at the greatest risk among the same age group. Increasing rates of STDs among men contributed to the overall increase in 2014 across all diseases. Risk factors range from lifetime sex partners to cultural, environmental, and social behavior. 
and the overall quality of health increased other health conditions in all age groups. Sexual addiction and overcoming anyone can have a sex addiction, no matter their gender sexual preferences, or other factors. Ordinarily the excessive actions and behavior with sex forms greed. Self goals. 1. Decide to quit and don't make excuses. 2. Set a date to quit, and then completely stop. Don't waste time. Acknowledge you can't control emotions and fears of not having sex with random partners. 3. Write out a mission statement with a will to overcome the addiction. 4. Control any behavior that puts you back in the same addictive mindset, and anything else puts you at risk of backsliding into your former habits. 5. Seek out support, spend time with the people you love most. 6. Celebrate your accomplishments, and think about how far you have come. If you go a month or two without exhibiting addictive behavior, treat yourself to something to honor your achievements. Reversing thoughts and actions. To switch directions of actions and thoughts is to achieve righteous victory. But people who give meaningless sexual advancements to others, spend a lot of time applying themselves to excessive stuff that won't get them ahead in life. Ordinary people who acknowledge someone that only applies themselves towards meaningless actions and thoughts, usually attack the person's beliefs or character. If the person is employed, even a boss will give them harder tasks than the others. Meaningless conversation and opinions will get you nowhere, and if you are giving any meaningless advice just stop. You will only hinder others' success. When forming meaningless thoughts of applying yourself towards sexual advancements that hinder others' eternal relationships, you must reverse the actions and thoughts. And avoid meaningless chatter. Avoid getting a selfish point across. Typically, most altercations start from one or more individuals wanting to get a point across. People who have compulsive or obsessive disorders often value getting a selfish point across rather than, the relationship itself. When people are illiterate and value getting a point across, it can come off as evasive and ignorant. This happens when they don't have the facts in order. When people are intelligent and value getting a point across, it can come off as arrogant and judging. This happens when they think of themselves too much. But the people who value getting a point across tends to deny these facts. And obvious reasons why some people in traffic consciously cut off others, or end up in verbal altercations. To avoid selfish points of view, try not to form selfish beliefs, opinions, or values. Also, modify your irresistible and unconscious impulses responsibly. Don't wait for God or people of authority to modify your actions and behavior for you. Natural over habitual impulses. To do something naturally means that by nature these things exist, and often the things we people do are naturally established, but nature can lead to habitual. In the body of a church, excessiveness is voided out. Due to the preacher's continual thirst for delivering God's message, to those who acknowledge changing their unmodified actions and behavior. They realize modified impulses can lead to eternal life on earth, and unmodified impulses can lead to an eternal death on earth. And this is whether or not tradition plays a factor. From my understanding, you cannot acknowledge obeying laws without obeying them yourself. It is just easier to point the finger at others' actions and behavior, as long as, the finger doesn't reverse pointing at you. How can you embody a compassionate, kind, and loving spirit? By showing compassion for people in a time of need, showing kindness gently and humbly, and showing love with affection in a passionate way. Reversing Player Roles According to Genesis when Eve ate the forbidden fruit and then convinced Adam to do the same, seducing temptation began its course then, so don't blame God. Either gals try to replace the relationship they didn't obtain with their father or desire to treat guys as objects. Players put your macho but big boy boxers on to make wiser choices, and stop creating confusion to seek a side chick when your gal doesn't oblige to your list of demands. Be more concerned with her health condition, rather than limiting access to better mental and physical capabilities. Self Goals 1. Stop looking for someone to blame for womankind's seduction. And simply, rise above the adulterous boyfriend or husband role who doesn't face fears. To change the overall perspective of unfavorable and untraditional ways of dealing with a gal's seduction. 2. Players need to acknowledge what a spiritual man's character is to appear like, to be of relevance as a husband in a marriage. The appearance is that of a godly male, purified mentally and physically. 3. Avoid stepping outside the marriage to profit negatively, due to excessive spending habits. An affair of matters dear to the heart is to budget wisely daily. 4. Exercise patience daily in verbal conversations with anyone. Guys need to open up to communicate effectively with the spouse whether working or non-working in the relationship. Speak and then allow them to speak, talk corrective English and then leave the room to exit the conversation before interrupting them to speak. These love wars have been going on for ages now, it is time for a change. Rather than create love wars express love through Jesus Christ and the church. 5. Looking for a booty call ought to be a thing of the past, and hustling off gals too. This includes escort services, prostitution, strip clubs, topless bars gals even those poses for nude scenes, etc. Don't be a guy who 1. 
values being accompanied by a strange gal part-time. 2. Values a relationship from part-time love. 3. Is open to comparing part-time love to a real marriage. 4. Accept any type of polyamorous relationship, only accept a monogamous one. 5. Is willing to pay bills and allow their gal to bring in another guy for sex. Otherwise, don't let the fear of being alone for several years dominate your effortless behavior. 6. Values a need for a gal whose only concern is sex with anyone and everyone. 7. Ruthlessly and vainly have sex for the pleasure of dominating gals. 8. Doesn't value verifying the new gal's criminal, educational, marital, spiritual, work history or furthermore her last name. Try to find a woman who has or is willing to advance her achievements, education, goals, and income. Bottom line, according to the Bible it is only necessary to form one relationship as eternal, so avoid cheating gals out of this richness of the human spirit. The privilege of superiority over a gal eternally requires a sense of leadership and guidance, and so a guy ought to embrace confidence to remain in the relationship. And so stand for what you believe is righteous and true, and give your all to the relationship. Don't overlook positive things in a relationship that is to last, to make irresponsible decisions based upon the quote brothers before horse. In general, if you don't value the quote, you won't need to honor it. Use the available time to help build up kids, teens, and other adults into honorable lifestyles that will achieve lasting results. Be a guy who values living a heavenly and righteous lifestyle. A guy who is concerned about the affair of matters dear to the heart while providing for the home. If your spouse does dance at a strip club, simply don't entertain the adulterous lifestyle. If a side dude surfaces into the marriage deal with the affair of matters with an open heart and don't hold grudges. Avoid destruction, verbal wars, and violence of any kind. Although some gals date guys who are married, guys ought to value following formal traditional ways of marriage while respecting other guys' privacy. And avoid meeting a gal who values using the quote sisters before pimps, they won't acknowledge being a responsible spouse effectively. Remember it is possible to find a spouse who embodies a gentle diva mentality. Anything more than this will involve playing into polygamous roles of marriage which are not recommended, neither is digital dating after marriage. Cowardliness for long-term commitments. The Bible is the original reference to how man and woman are to share partnership. Having a cold heart toward love and respect can hinder doing significant things in the relationship, and make you a coward to long-term commitments. You run from things that you are to value most. Often this is the result of abandonment issues along with, the love that you didn't get from supportive parents. Once you are in a habit of denying love and respect, relationships suffer, when neither takes the initiative to acknowledge nothing's getting done by one another. Some people guard their differences until the other person leads in a relationship, but for some this never happens and they become broken-hearted. After that, they fear the traditional sense of relationships and become susceptible to the untraditional sense of relationships. A person then becomes willing to break the marriage tradition after being hurt with the continual occurrences. This shows a need to love God first, to establish a goal of how far to go with love, and to know when it is possible to let your guard down. It isn't necessary after that to express negative emotions, once your heart trusts God. So, avoid abandoning fruitful relationships, and stepping out of marriage tradition. Because if there are kids in the relationship, their needs will become unmet while wallowing in selfless pride too long, before realizing you done failed in relationships that meant the most. Also, avoid friends benefits base relationships that don't give God the formality of having experienced it. You ought to know to whom you want to give love, respect, and compassion. Things a married guy shouldn't do. 1. Rim job, eating the anus or booty, booty snatching. 2. Lusting for strippers, going to nightclubs for gals who dance on poles. 3. Pimping, pimping a prostitute for money. 4. Using a child for sex to keep the girlfriend or spouse. Fatal things a married guy shouldn't do. 01. Cursing kids or spouse. 02. Seeking revenge against the spouse for cheating outside the marriage. 03. Taking kids to drinking hot spots. 04. Driving drunk. 05. Dating other gals or become a one night stand. 06. Seeking multiple relations. 07. Cover up with gluttony, excessive drinking, or eating, also the spouse shouldn't either. 08. Cooking unhealthy foods for the family, foods with fewer nutrients. 09 looking for the spouse while she's cheating. 10. Creating conflict because the spouse cheats outside the marriage. 11. Holding bitterness because you know she cheats. 12. Nitpicking fights with a side dude that the spouse has cheated with. Obvious things a married guy shouldn't do. 1. Allowing someone to insert a fist into their anus. 2. Grabbing someone else's booty, other than the spouse. 3. Going boxer or underwear less outside the home. These are things that use up a guy's best energy when the time can be consumed giving quality care to the kids. All those things have been proven to be useless in a marriage. Once God acknowledged in the beginning woman will continually fail based upon seducing temptation, it is up to guys to remain fruitful. 
only once the spouse is willing to give a divorce should a guy take steps outside the marriage. This is for the wellness of the kids and to avoid fatality or infidelity. These are things guys can do to obtain better bonds of communication during the marriage. And so, avoid waiting to change the evil ways, because all the above forms disrespect towards the Father in heaven. Deep down inside no married gal wants her spouse to become untrustworthy towards the Father's image. Even though it is the playgirls who are leading guys into seeking naughty girl roles, etc. Setbacks with actors, athletes, pro wrestlers, NBA players, NFL players, singers, stylists, hip-hop artists, rappers, and retailers. Typically, most guys in these leagues get a lot of nutrition because the body craves it. They tend to give up during their middle ages and become unwilling to consume higher amounts of natural foods, but this is when the body needs it most. During the middle ages, the body becomes less likely to heal from cancer and diseases as did prior years, therefore more is needed. With the FDA warning supplement manufacturers to cut back on dosages of vitamin supplements. Doctors have to stop encouraging patients to take higher dosages, this is for fear of lawsuits. The body needs extra nutrients like a car needs gas, but many are willing to put more gas in a car instead. Ultimately this has most professional athletes retiring early, and generally, African Americans life expectancy is lesser than other ethnic backgrounds. For all players within these communities life can become demanding and draining when adding in injuries and multiple relations. Although these guys in these leagues share their entire life stories with fans, it would be a blessing to see more African Americans achieve longer with grace and fulfill more destinies. Example of multivitamin dosages. I'm a woman 48 years of age and 5 feet 10 inches in height, about 30% of my vision is lost with having had full amounts of cancers and diseases. When I took one multivitamin cancer and diseases started clearing out slowly, but after I took two multivitamins a day cancer and diseases cleared out moderately. If I had not taken them twice a day, I would have lost my entire teeth and vision before reaching age 50. This was how defiled my cancer and diseases were. Now I have healthier teeth and gums, and my vision hasn't been lost any more than it had been. However, I wouldn't recommend taking more than two for an adult on any given basis. So many people with cancers and diseases nowadays are willing to lose everything. To what cost do we people say no to doctors? Enough is enough, I don't want surgery nor reoccurring hospital visits if it means losing any of my body parts. Note, a little secret to losing weight for adults with health problems, take one multivitamin in the morning at 8.30, and another one at 12 o'clock. This will give you a ton of energy to burn the fat off before bedtime, but try not to eat after 5 p.m. daily. Basically, to not add more calories once the fat has been burned off. If you have days when you can't control eating after 5 p.m., drink plenty of water during the night to decrease excess fat added. And enjoy life to the fullest.